uh, I wrote, um, that's just life. Uh, <laughs> that was my first time trying espresso coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene, the people that make it, including me, and this guy. My guest today is someone that I met at Chiba Hut, actually, at, I think it was Chiba Hut 420 you performed at. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, and that was amazing. Sky Dub, uh, who's, you know, regular of the channel, good friend of the channel, uh, did an awesome job putting that show on, hosting that show. I think it started at, like, 10 in the morning. I think so, too. It went yeah. till like, midnight. Yeah, he, it went for a while. <laughs> he, was, he was burnt by the end of it, but good job, <laughs> Scotty. And look who's here. Um, he's a singer-songwriter and also the guitarist for Scotty Dub, which is why I brought him up. A survivor of the hospitality game. <laughs> and because of that, we're going to start with a shot. Please welcome to the channel, Braun Solo. Say hi. Hi, what's up? <laughs> we're having some uh, Caribbean black rum. Oh, it's different. It, it was cold. Yeah, no, no, it's all warm. It's pretty mm. good still, though. Yes. It, 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 don't, a... Neglect is a terrible thing. Don't abuse your alcohol. Oh, you're right. <sighs> right on. So, the other cool thing about Braun is where he works. He works for Happy Days on Rainbow and Sahara. Uh, Happy Days number two, I believe. Yeah, LV2. <laughs> and the reason why that, that's cool is that also at Chiba Hut, I had the Room 6 Rocks Summer Showcase. If you've seen any of my videos recently, you know that that was a thing where I basically celebrated and showcased five acts that have been on the channel in the past. Um, and it was a good time, and it was hot, but the people that were there stayed, and, and we had a great time. Um, and I, I just I can't say thank you enough to the sponsors such as Happy Days. This, this is what it was about. Right there, sponsored by Happy Days and Chiba Hut. Thank you so very much. And I want to give this shirt to you. Because you couldn't make it to the showcase. Oh, that's cool, man. Yes. Well, guess what? Well, I brought you a nice bronze solo shirt to have nice. just for your own self. Nice. Now I can shoot first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what would be cool? What? Movie magic! Hey! Look at that! Movie magic, it's so cheesy. <laughs> Someone should write a song about that. Dude, right? Movie magic, super cheesy. No, I just meant cheesy song. Hey, I do have cheesy songs. <laughs> Dick around because he will be performing up in room six. I think one of the songs is cheesy. It's yeah, definitely cheesy, cheesy song. Yes. So, right off the bat, thank you for coming on the channel. No problem. Thank you for having me. Official welcome. Room six. Branded merch. This just in, you can show your support for Room 6 by going to room6.shop after this video. We have tons of merch, including discounted cold weather merch and more. Whatever you need to show your support for local music and Room 6 is there, from shirts to hoodies to mugs to posters to stickers. Whether showing off that you're a patron on our Patreon page with our Two Brains One Bottle shirt, or reminding people to just be amazing, room6.shop has what you need to be a friend of the channel. Thanks for supporting Room 6. Cheesy. Moich, moich, moich. <laughs> So I had a quick question for you. What's up? You went from Stillwater to Tulsa to Vegas? <laughs> yeah, and a little bit of Colorado in between. Oh, of course, Colorado. <laughs> Colorado. Colorado. Speaking of 420, hey. Right? So <laughs> <coughs> were you moved from Stillwater? Um, so Stillwater is my like hometown. Right. I'm, I'm born and raised in Oklahoma. And then I kind of frequent Tulsa as well because that's I had family in Tulsa. Okay. And so... Um, just always back and forth game of living between Tulsa and, and Stillwater. Uh, but then at like 26, I decided I was like, I'm going to go out and explore the world. And I went to Colorado for three years. Terrible idea. <laughs> Stay at home. Not place. too bad. <laughs> uh, the worst part about where I was at was it would get negative 45 degrees in the wintertime. Yeah. Um, Oklahoma's not much better. No, it's hum humid over there. <laughs> yeah. But then I moved out here with my buddy Matt and um, his wife, Natasha. And so I've been out here for, I think... Three or four years now? Right on. How was that first summer? Oh, <laughs> it wasn't too bad. I kept hearing about all the flooding and stuff, and I think this is the first summer that we had that was like a lot of rain, and I actually got to like experience Now, yeah, down on Fremont Street, it was crazy. Like, people were... Didn't some guy like literally raft down... Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> that was hilarious. I saw that video. But um, there's been flooding here in previous years. We always have the monsoon season, as we call it. It's not really monsoons, but it's a really rainy season. It just kind of dumps... 
Uh, and I've never heard it or seen it where, like, Fremont Street, you know, mm-hmm. downtown Vegas was flooding like that. It's usually more of the area, like, the the, the residential suburban areas where maybe they don't have pr- proper drainage for that. Because mm-hmm. why would they? It's the desert. Because, yeah, right. <laughs> right? It's all going to evaporate anyway. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's, let's get into a couple of questions here. Let's talk musical influences. Okay. okay. What is that first <clears throat> earliest musical influence that made you say, I want to do that? Uh, well... I mean, I guess I could always go back and say it was my dad. Uh, he was always a musician growing up. Like, when I was growing up, he played in bands like Two Dollar Bill. Uh, the last band he played in was actually Rolling Fatties, and you can catch some <laughs> of their stuff on uh, Spotify. Really cool stuff. Kind of a deep-fried southern blues is what I think they called it. Um, and then, but the person that made me pick up the guitar... And actually, start is uh, this guy named John Companion from the Black Dolly Murder. Mm, it was like really? A, yeah, yeah. I actually was a pretty heavy metal kid whenever uh, I first picked up guitar. So even in my uh, playing style, I still feel like I can, I can be like, oh, that's a little heavy. <laughs> like, that's, that's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, that's brutal. That is, that's precious. <laughs> Do a brutal roll. <laughs> right so on. I don't know. I just uh, <laughs> I've always had like, and I mean, you know, the classics like Steve Vai and. Uh, all of them, Zach Wild, and I don't know. I just, uh, John Companion, he was the reason I picked up guitar. And I just, I loved his style. I loved everything that he uh, did as he played. Right on. So that's why I picked it up. <laughs> cool. From there, I want to add to say, songwriting-wise, mm-hmm. it's I know it's an organic process over time. Being a songwriter myself, there are times where you're just like, something gets in your head, you walk around and kind of beat it around here for a while, and suddenly, a while. <laughs> suddenly it becomes a song. Or maybe you have two things, and they become a song eventually. Yeah. What is your normal songwriting process, or is there one? Um, I mean, some of my songs uh, I've written just out of whim, you know, just like out of like, um, I mean, cheesy song was one that I wrote for a girl, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and she broke up with me. So that's always that's usually what happens now. And I don't write love songs anymore ever because of that. <laughs> okay, Alicia. But um, I know, right? <laughs> oh, actually, I'm sorry. That was not Alicia Keys. That was um, oh, what's her name? Sarah but Boreas. Okay, there you go. I didn't know either. So. For all of you that didn't know, I'm with you on that. <laughs> um, but someone would have yelled at me, if right? I, if I, <laughs> um, I. I try to always get the, I don't know how like some people do it, like maybe writing lyrics first and then guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of do it writing guitar and then as I play along, I start to kind of feel the vibe of how I want to like sing and be able to kind of play. Uh, lyrics are kind of one of those tricky things for me. I I don't necessarily like my lyric writing, so I tend to judge everything a little too hard. Um, but... It just kind of has to, I don't know, I have to be, like, really, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, in a moment. Like, um, I, I wrote a song for my dad when he passed away. I wrote, uh, of course, cheesy song for um, a girl I liked. Uh, I wrote um, That's Just Life. Uh, <laughs> that was my first time trying espresso coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Not where I, I thought you were going to go no, with I that. stayed up all night uh, writing that one. I did have some riffs in mind that were like uh, my brother kind of wrote, and I was like, I'm going to steal that. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so thanks, Casey. Like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Um, from there, I want to ask a quick question. Which was better? Easy squirt purple ketchup or fun squeeze pink syrup? <laughs> and if you know, you know. Yeah, no. Hmm. <laughs> uh, the purple ketchup. For mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> it's just so incongruous. Like, it's so like I don't why, know <laughs> why. Why are my French fries purple? You know. I remember when the Shrek. Um, oh God! The, that's I think that's why they did it all green. And Burger King was doing it green yep. ketchup and all that. And I remember that because I was just like, well, this is the awesome. purple ketchup was around before <laughs> Shrek. I think purple ketchup. I, guess, I remember it. Yeah. I remember purple ketchup, too. I just remember green being, like, all of a sudden at, like, oh, yeah, Burger yeah, yeah. King and all the other places, because so they were like, no. But, yeah, I remember my dad bringing home some of that purple and green, all the different colors of Easy ketchup. Score. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> nice. Um, from there, I want to talk, actually, uh, favorite show memories. 
Like, do you have a favorite, like a memory of just either that checked off something on my rock star list or, uh, I can't believe that happened or that was incredibly bad or, you know, this. As far as like a, uh, some show show I've played. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was one time, uh, I was playing with this, uh, death metal band called Brutalis and, um, which was like Brutal Is. Uh, and we were playing at this place in Oklahoma, a lot in Oklahoma called, uh, the Railhead Saloon. Ah, and uh, I, I wasn't really of age yet, so I had a uh, a signed document saying I could go into the bar and whatnot. And it was it was cool, it was awesome. Right. But uh, I'll never forget this one time I'm going up on stage, and I'm just kind of getting warmed up, doing some little leakage stuff. And this this lady, just drunk as hell, just oh. Sh- Everything during warm up. During warm up, I was like, I don't even know what's gonna happen during playing Damn. at this point. Yeah, Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, Oklahoma. 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 go hard. Yeah, they go hard for real. Yeah. <laughs> you want that kind of vibe? Uh, here, go to um, Colville Bay Marina at Lake Mead. Okay. Play some covers. Next thing you know, you got a bunch of drunk sailors, just sailing just, people. Just <laughs> oh my god, they have so much fun. Uh, or Mr. D's bar, but whatever. Mr. D's bar. I don't know, but yeah. Have you been to Mr. D's? No, I don't think I've been to Mr. D's. I think the picture, last... Picture in your mind a biker bar. I'm sorry, operator. I can't hear you. I'm trying to use the phone! Okay. Mm-hmm. In a biker bar. Okay, like biker. Bike gang. Oh, I know, I know, I know a good one. Now throw in, they're also a Dallas Cowboys bar. <laughs> but these are bikers that love Dallas Cowboys? This island, about double it. Make that linoleum in a corner, that's your stage. Not, not, yeah, it's flat, Just you're just in the corner, underneath multiple monitors showing sports or whatever, that don't get turned off when you're playing. Now, I don't know how it is now. This is when I was... When you first played? I played there every month. I, I sang in a, a cover band called Revolving Door. Best band name ever, because... It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trapped in those before as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, and we would just play four-hour shows and get paid crap. And uh, But but I, I've seen some things, man. Yeah, I've seen some stuff. <laughs> seen some things. Right on. Um, so from there, that, that's your favorite memory. Yeah. Do you have a favorite venue for live music here in town? Here in town? Just for seeing it or playing it. Um, I really, I guess I really like, even though it's not really that big of a stage, I really like Rebar. I just like, uh, I've always liked um, the art district areas of like any towns. You just played there. Um, yeah, I did actually like, with Scotty and, uh, yeah, I played with Scotty over there. Uh, unfortunately, I was going to be, I actually now play with Chalmer a bit now. So, Chalmer Harper. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I was hoping I was going to be able to play with both of them that show, and I, when I was looking at the bill, I, I misunderstood the bill. And so <laughs> I didn't, I thought it was going to be like Chalmer, Scotty, and then I'd be able to like go and do the other uh, show we had at the Double Down, which right. that was cool. Um, I think we only had two can- beer cans thrown at us. <laughs> Chicken water? Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, no, I, I think I always, uh, just, I have always loved the, the art districts of uh, the towns I've lived in mm-hmm. and, uh, just rebar. Uh, I just, I think it's just got that kind of, uh, I'm sad to say vibe. I have not been there yet. I've lived here like 17 years or so. And every time I think I'm going to rebar, I'm going to a show, I either have to be somewhere else. Or it, I just I can't make it for some reason. Oh man! Like last night, I couldn't make it, and and I totally would have. Um, on Sundays, many times I drive by there after leaving Soul Belly, where I do live streams of the Songwriter Showcase with House Park, and I'm always like, that would have been cool, man. <laughs> but now it's like ten thirty or eleven at night, and yeah, I'm the out. show's yeah. over, or yeah. or if it's not over, you know. But yeah, I will make I will make it to Rebar. I will do a review of the venue. I will do a review of the of the video or of, of the show. The, rebar, man. the fact God. that I've only lived here like four years and I've been there I know, several times. I, know. <laughs> I haven't been to Eagle Area Hall either, so you know. I don't even know what that is. It's an all ages. It's one of the few all ages like real. You can you can see hardcore punk and metal and stuff, and, and it's true all ages. Uh, and um, what's it called again? Eagle Airy Hall, A E R I E, which is apparently like Eagle's Nest. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to check. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't hear it. Uh, yeah, no, I don't yeah. know. Right on. So, 
A couple more questions. Okay. Almost done. Yeah. And then we're going to see him upstairs. If you want to be on the channel, by the way, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click on the Room 6 social media link where you can find ways to support the channel, such as Room6.shop, my online merch shop, or Patreon, or, you know, a couple CDs that I put out myself. And you can also find ways to contact me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Also, if you want to be on the channel, come on. We'll have a good time. I, can, I do interviews. I do reviews. I'll do live streams. All sorts of fun things. If you won't, don't want to miss out on any of that fun stuff, please consider subscribing. You know the drill. Ring the bell. Yada, yada, yada. I'm done. <laughs> In the meantime, back to you. You have any of that Oki Fine China? <laughs> Oki Fine China. <laughs> right. No. Oki Fine China. <laughs> Can you no. describe for the non Oklahomites? <laughs> what o o Oki Fine China is? Yes, I know what it is. Um, I mean, if it's what I think it is, is uh, you know, if you've seen Breaking Bad, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I should really say it on. Oh, it's on... not just Tupperware. No, oh. <laughs> unfortunate. Um, luckily, I've never touched this stuff, so <laughs> I don't really do that. <laughs> you gotta be careful what you post, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. We'll get away from that. Demonetization. De <laughs> um, I wanted to ask a, a weird question, if I can. Okay. If you could change one thing about the local music scene, what would it be? Start a fight. Start a fight. Um, or not. Man, I, honestly, I've really been impressed with the local scene here as far as like a... Uh, it's been... Uh, it's, musicians. It, lately, it's been really getting a lot better about just everybody realizing... We're all in it together. Well, and that's where it's like I've I've played with you know I played with Scotty, I played with Chalmer. I've even gone and done some shows with Ivy. Yeah. Before uh, live shows over at the Rock Bar, Rockstar Bar, um, and you know like I never felt like oh just because I'm you know playing the guitar or something like I'm instantly a rocker or like always a rocker. And so it's like it's it's fun getting to just kind of play those rap beats, have a guy come up and you know start rapping. Mm -hmm. And even um, when we're with Scotty, uh, Snap Murphy and uh, Charlie King will come in yep. and, and, and do some stuff with us. So, um, I don't know. I, I like, I kind of like where it seems like this local scene has really just kind of like everyone's kind of meshed together. And what I would say more is that, um, the locals should try to make it out to your local bands, shows, concerts a bit more. Because Definitely. that is where, you know, maybe you've heard the song several times, but getting out there and supporting your local bands, that's where, it really helps us out in the end. It helps everybody else out, too. I agree. Um, I, there's been multiple times where I've gone to something, a show, and, you know, I, I do a review. I, I'm kind of working, you know, making content. But I'm always happy I go. Something always cool happens and comes out of it. But can, canceling plans is like crack. It's one of the best things ever. <laughs> when you're so But you've got to talk yourself into it. You gotta, yes, <laughs> exactly. Now when I go out, I literally have to rationalize, okay, well, this means more content to edit. And when am I, you know, I, it, it's, it's a, it's a show that happened. I got to kind of do it semi soon. Can't do this like a review of the show three months later. It doesn't make no. sense. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but it's, it's worth it. Go out. Um, even if you just go to like an open mic or a songwriter showcase, you can really number one, support the scene at like a grassroots. This is where a lot of great bands start yeah. is, Hey, I saw you at the open mic or at the showcase. And do you want to start a thing? And next thing you know, like a couple more people, it becomes a, a big kind of thing. And, and make it like a just a, a night out, you know. And it's, totally, you know. And you know what? Sundays, seven p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you're in the area of Main Street downtown Las Vegas, and you have nothing else to do, go to Soul Belly Barbecue, and get you'll some get some barbecue. amazing food. You see Songwriter Showcase. I'll be there doing my thing and live streaming it. If you can't make it physically, drop it on the live stream. Uh, you know, you could just basically subscribe and you'll get notified about it. You're just walking around that area and you oh, know, Fremont. The, the arts just district. Just listen, there. listen for that, that yes. live music and go check it out at least. Yes, I have I have a fondness in my heart for First Friday in the arts district. But lately, First Friday, I'm always I'm interviewing somebody or I'm busy okay. now. <laughs> so I haven't had I haven't gone to a First Friday like in a while. Just just to go to First Friday. Um, in fact, the last let's one let's all make it possible for next month's. 
first Friday, this guy gets to go and but, do a but review. But that, that means I won't have an interview. <laughs> okay. This man's so busy. He's, no, he's but I, I will, I will, I will get back to it first Friday. I have a soft spot in my heart for it. I played the second first Friday ever. Really? Yeah. Um, with Le- cool. Lisa Mack. Who Where'd I you play <sighs> She remembers. I don't remember. We, <laughs> we, we shared a bill, uh, some coffee house. Okay. It was very early days of first Friday. Okay. Like, way, do you remember a guitar shop called DT, or downtown Las Vegas, or DTLV? Uh, it had like a tin roof, uh, above the stage. Very, it was a guitar shop. And then, like, you know. I've re- only lived here four years as a dad. That's true. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> but it was really, it was really cool. It was really loud because that, it just reverberated the sound. Mm-hmm. And you're in a guitar shop, you know. And so everyone's back. But they had, they had a little bar set up and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And it was, it was literally, you know, where, um, okay, uh, Taverna Costera. Yeah. Played there several times. Across from Taverna Costera, there's the Arts Factory. There's that, you know, that. That cool mural on it. There. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Across the street from that, across from, across the street uh, uh, on the other side of Charleston. Okay. Third Street, I think it was. Like, just a couple shops down was this place. So it was really, it was in the mix. Played there. That's where I met actually uh, first drummer of my indie rock band that I had for years, and uh, it was just that was it was starting to feel like hey, this is a thing. And then for some reason they shut down, and then uh, COVID happened. You know. But the what I was going to say was we were talking about the, the local scene. It's getting kind of cool, and, and and people are starting to be supportive and, and network and mix mix and and you know do joint adventures and stuff. I feel like I hate to say it. But I feel like COVID really helped the local scene. Oh, no. Because <laughs> before quarantine, but before people got thirsty for any live music yeah, at all, um, there, was, there, was, there was a little bit of clickiness going on. There were certain problems and certain things, and you're just like, oh, well, you know, I don't go to this venue because this, has this is all they play or whatever. Right, or, or, or if, if, if uh, you know, I... I, I think, too, like, the, some of the venues probably realized such a hit they're taking without, like, mm-hmm. with only trying to get one style or, like, something like that. Right. Know? So appreciate what you have. Without music, life is a lot worse. Yeah. So go awesome. out and support the music. Last question. You made it. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> now, normally, I'll either ask a question about gear... Or I'll ask, like, um, let's talk to a little you. And what advice would you give? But I think I'm going to do something a little different for you. Okay. I'm going to go back to an OG Room 6 question. Okay. Any dream shows that, w- that you have on okay. your, your All right, list? Yeah, dream shows. Um, like, like, you know... Because I feel like I've, I've tapped the well of, let's talk to little Hugh, any advice to new musicians, and what would you warn people about or tell people, hey, this is what you need to know. I feel like I've tapped that a lot. You know, don't yeah. say change your strings. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but as far as um, actually, you know, wh- what's on your dream board, so what's to speak? on my dream board as far as, like, you know, shows and stuff like that? Yeah. I mean... Maybe we can manifest it. Yeah, right? <laughs> That'd be dope. Uh, I mean, Carnegie Hall is always one of those that I guess everybody really wants to play. <laughs> I laugh because my very first interview, almost four years ago, with Sean Flume, my former one of my former drummers, I said, "What? What's your favorite show memory?" He said, "Oh, when I was a teenager, I went to Carnegie Hall, played Carnegie Hall." I said, "Because he was in band." And yeah, he, I was gonna say, and he's, that, he's okay. an incredible drummer. He was playing timpani at the time, the big fat drum, and, uh, and that's why I laughed. I was like, Carnegie Hall. <laughs> so what else? Here we are back to the OG question. I'm bringing up the OG. There stances. you go. So um, um, no, I actually I used to play orchestra and stuff. So like I, I just I eventually my violin went from here to like mm-hmm. here, and then my dad was just like just play guitar. So um, I mean I never like uh, I, I guess I just kind of was like well I don't need to play violin anymore. If I'm going to invest all my stuff into that. But uh, I think that would be cool. Honestly, I'm I really I. I, I I think uh, I've always really kind of enjoyed those shows over on Fremont. Uh, like I saw Alien Ant Farm, uh, Soul of oh, yeah. and Uva Stank over there. And I feel like that would be honestly probably one of the coolest where like people are like walking by there regardless. It's a know? mass like, of people. It's, it's yeah. a mass of people. Some people are going to stop. They're going to stay. They're going to listen to what you're playing. Well, so you know? Now is this, you're hoping to do that with your own original music? Or are you just... You don't care. Man, 
even if it's, you know, if I'm still rocking with, like, Scotty Dub and, and yeah. we're up there doing his stuff, you know, like, I really, uh, Braun Solo, I've got my stuff I'm going to do as far as that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how far um, that will take me just because I feel like I'm more of a guitarist than a songwriter. Right. And so I want to, like, really push more on to writing these instrumental kind of stuff, and I've actually kind of got a couple people I'm working with uh, to maybe make a kind of instrumental jazz, like all fusion kind of um, sound and whatnot. So um, I definitely have some stuff like on the horizon for that, but um, I mean, man, just something about that Fremont stage and just like how many people go by, I just think that that would be pretty cool. And I mean, I've played on some big stages and really playing anywhere i think just playing anywhere would just be everywhere playing everywhere would be cool honestly <laughs> yeah, everywhere. like everywhere Braun solo everywhere everywhere because i just to to ever think that like my stuff would be big to where it's like i can only play you know like the ford center or something like that you know <laughs> <laughs> shout out oklahoma <laughs> um I, I i would like to even still go down to like the dive bar and play yeah. on you a told it, yeah. stage. If, if, if Foo Fighters taught us nothing, rest in peace, Taylor Hawkins. Submit so, Dave. I'm sorry. So sorry. Dave. Yeah. I read your book. It's great. Uh, Everyone read the story to it. Yes. But if Foo Fighters taught us that, I mean, you, you know they did that whole garage tour, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. they have no problem subverting expectations yeah. and playing, you know, small shows. shows. Even house shows. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, I get you. I always wanted to do a proper festival. I, I've played some music festivals in town. Yeah. And I've played to, say, a thousand people, which was cool. Mm-hmm. But they're like high schoolers. So they're, they, they don't, you know, they can't. They're not really, yeah. <laughs> they're because they're forced. But that, and that was when I was 22, which is way different than what I am now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now they'd be like, who cares? But I always kind of wanted that moment of just walking out, and they don't know who you are from Adam, but you're just like, hello! Klaus Jester! Hello, <laughs> wherever! You know, whatever music festival this is. And they all go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted the wall of sound back at me. No, that's, and that's a great feeling, honestly. I don't think I've ever, yes. like, a, of course, I've never had that personally, as, like, far as, like, a band like that. Well, you know what? It's not too late for you. Right. Learn from my <laughs> No, definitely stick around. You're going to hear some amazing music from him, because he is actually a really talented songwriter. He's not just a hired a, a guitar, hired gun, sling an electric for other people. <laughs> so, um... Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Thank you for letting me on the channel. No worries for letting. Yes, I get out. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> stick around. We're going to see you upstairs in room six. Temporarily say goodbye. Later. Later. This is cheesy song. Your personality puts a smile on my face Your charm is just the icing on the cake When I'm with you, everything is alright You always show me a good time, day and night First time we spoke, I knew we'd be friends And what we have, others will never comprehend Flirt and laugh like never before. You got me inside out, surface decor. Well, I can be myself when I'm with you, laughing and sharing in all that we do. Your personality puts a smile on my face. Your charm's just the icing on the cake. When I'm with you, everything is alright You always show me a good time, day and night And I'm so grateful That I met you I hope you feel the same way too Take long 
for you to make the top of my list with every moment, every hug, every smile, every kiss. For all the dreams you've had of me, a few I've had of you. Your presence gives me the sense there's nothing I can't do. Your personality puts a smile on my face. Your charm is just the icing on the cake. When I'm with you, everything is alright. You always show me a good time, day and The song's called Lose Control. I'm making my way on down the street Hearing the sounds, looking around, nowhere to be Amazed by all the beauty I see Illumination, civilization, creativity Sometimes all we need is a change For better or for worse, only you can claim So grab hold of the tune in your soul Let it be free, lose control I'm making my way on down the path is it right, is it wrong, is it short, is it long, does it lead to greener grass? I'm happiness shall be aftermath. A wonderful bliss, so easy to slip, so hard to grasp. Don't let the moment go to waste. Cause life can be over short, so don't procrastinate. You got one chance, one life to be whole. So let it be free and lose control. I want to thank Ron Solo for dropping by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to be on the channel, like I said, hit me up down in the description using the email address or the Room 6 social media link. If you would like to support the channel, use that Room 6 social media link or just go to room6.shop. You can get merch. You can find all sorts of ways to support the channel. And it really does help the local scene. At least I hope it does. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing and we'll see you next time. On room six, say goodbye, Bron. Goodbye, Bron. Ba da ba ba da ba.